December 23rd. I know overnight should be the next day, but that's because they're expecting an increased load of stuff coming through and they need that time to get things onto vehicles, to wherever they're going and then physically delivered. Help us if there's snow or some other condition or if you're shipping to a different zone. Now that may not really be as relevant for like FedEx and UPS because they got planes going everywhere. I think the postal service uses trains a lot. I don't know if they use planes so much. I've never worked for them. I have a relative who works for the post office and I briefly did a stint at UPS and I used to use FedEx exclusively at one of my past jobs. So I have some pretty good understanding, but I would say this about that. Weather will affect things. Um, any crisis going on in the world, such as COVID-19, will affect things. And of course, dumb luck. I mean, all it takes is your package being scanned on one day versus another for it to be counted as not getting out the door until the very next business day. And that could mean it misses a cutoff. I would always make sure you have your tracking number. I would make sure that you give the tracking number to the recipient, unless it's an absolute surprise. If you can ensure it, please do, because you may find later on you'll be kicking yourself if you don't. And of course, I wanted to mention briefly how to package things so that they survive. When in doubt, a sturdy cardboard corrugated box. They sell them. You can get the free ones, but that means you're gonna be using their priority meal service with the post office. I think the free ones with UPS and FedEx, um, same thing, they're expecting you to use their services. So don't try to use a FedEx box with the postal service or what have you, they, they, the guys don't, just, it's not nice. So, Sometimes you're better off just getting a brown cardboard box. I usually save my Amazon boxes because it's a little trick I have. I cut the side, flip it around, tape it closed with duct tape to be sure it's strong, and then package everything up and use a lot of packing tape to make sure all the seams are covered. And that usually holds well. Also, I believe in recycling whenever possible. So hence why I mentioned that. And boxes should not be super duper expensive, but obviously if you buy in bulk like a Uline or Quill or Staples, it's better. If you're not shipping in bulk, don't worry about it. If most of the time you are hand delivering stuff, but this year is different and you still want that hand delivered feel, what you do to the inside of the box will make a difference. Everything should be packed tight, but with lots of cushioning. I don't know how many times I can say this, when I've bought or sold something on eBay, when it's not packaged correctly, the item comes broken and that sucks, just to say it. So if you have those air pockets, great. Crumpled newspaper, crumpled brown craft paper. If you have the dissolvable earth-friendly popcorn peanuts, made out of like potato starch or something, I have those, that's great. But it doesn't look good and it's kind of messy. I would say if you're better off packing that in and then throwing a layer of tissue paper, it doesn't have to be decorative, over it so that when they open the box, it doesn't spew packing materials. Then put your item in, cover it with another tissue, and then put on more of the packing bubbles or what have you, so that when you close that box, it's in the dead center of the box, but it is, you can shake it and you can't hear anything. If you can hear something, you did it wrong, just say. Long story short, this year, a lot of my gifts, I'm wrapping in what we call a pillow box. It sort of looks like the apple pie at McDonald's, so it's kind of oblong, you know, rectangular-like, but with a little, little curve at the top and curve at the bottom and they fold over to make it flat. That's because when I can put it in a box, I can put it on its side diagonally and really pad things well. And I feel like that's a stronger way to ship something unless it's just an item that can't be tipped on its side. You gotta be careful with, well, let's just face it. You're not supposed to be shipping liquids. If you are, you have to go through the service, pay the extra fee, it's, it's involved but don't ship lip goods. If you're gonna buy a bottle of wine, buy it from the vendor, have them ship it to your recipient. Do not do this, try to pack it up yourself business. That's bad, especially because it's a flammable as well as a liquid and let's not get into that. So like with me, I do not ship perfume. I will order it, send it from corporate, send it to someone and then they're just gonna have to wrap it up pretty for the person receiving it. If I'm hand delivering, that's different. I can put it in a bag with tissue and make it cute and bring it to someone's door and hang it on the doorknob for like contactless um, receive. But for shipping, just stay away from that stuff. They take that seriously. And you don't wanna put your drivers in danger either. Just be, be kind. Uh, along the same lines, if you cannot do a box within a box, next best thing is to bubbles. You know, the padded wrap that we love to pop. Bubble wrap, whatever it is you're shipping, as if it were a box and then put it into the nest that you've created with your packing material and your tissue. 
I find that'll help keep it be squish resistant. And I can't say it's squish uh, proof. And again, I find that putting a bag, like a cute gift bag in with the product flat, so they can pop it open and put the item in later and put it under the tree or whatever is better than putting it in the bag and then putting it into the packaging with all the padding. Sorry, my shoulder keeps disappearing. Um, I'm using my phone today to record this instead of my computer so I can see the data on the screen big enough without my glasses. So uh, yeah, the VR uh, green screen tech isn't as good on the phone as it is on the computer, but it does well enough. You don't wanna see all the junk behind me, trust me. So yeah, when you're packaging something really cute like a fancy bow, you may wanna actually put that into like a Ziploc bag with a pocket of air so that it can be slipped onto the bag and or package later and get it shipped that way. Uh, I'm not a big fan of padded mailers for certain types of gifts because they will get squished and shaken and dropped. And the cardboard, the reason I'm a big fan of it is it's reusable, it is sturdy, it can handle a little bit of moisture, you know, snow, rain, whatever. Um, and it will take the moisture instead of the stuff inside. And that's why I was talking about the packing foam, if it's dissolvable, you know, put a layer of tissue in between, because let that stuff take the brunt of it so that the package you're sending, the gift you're sending does not get damaged. You may still want to consider putting whatever you're packing into some kind of a plastic bag. I won't use brand names. I mentioned Ziploc, but a zip type sandwich bag, freezer or regular is fine. That's big enough to not only cover the item in case it leaks, shaken, whatever, but also to um, give it a little more air pocket to protect it. So I hope that's been helpful. I know we're coming up on Black Friday or Black Week or whatever we're calling it nowadays. I call it Pink Friday. And if you're a customer of mine, you already know because you've gotten a newsletter and you'll get an email and you get a phone call and a text message. And well, not all of them, but whatever the method you preferred is, is gonna be the way I'm gonna reach out and remind you that there's special offers and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not gonna talk about that here, but I understand the reason we do that sale now is so that I have time to get things shipped out because I happen to use postal service for a lot of my stuff by or before the 15th because I like to do first class and priority. And that means I'd have to have my stuff in the post office's hands by the 18th or 19th at the latest. You wouldn't believe how quickly those two weeks are gonna go and go. So be prepared, have your packing materials, lots of packing tape, a good sturdy pair of scissors. You can't see it, but that pair of scissors. And of course, a lot of patience. I don't know about you, but I enjoy wrapping gifts. I do not enjoy finding out that a gift didn't make it or that it arrived damaged. Who does? Hopefully that's been helpful to you. And there will not be a video, I think, next Saturday, the 28th, it's Small Business Saturday. And I'll be basically following up with the people who participated in my Friday sale and probably reaching out to anyone who said they were going to but didn't for whatever reason. I might even take a little time to talk about someone else for a change. I know, right? Um, small businesses that I know and love that would love your support in business, offering things that I can't offer. And don't forget, even though it's kind of not a big deal anymore, there is Cyber Monday coming up and Giving Tuesday. That's one I really love. And maybe perhaps that's what I'll do is I'll record a pre-recorded video for Saturday talking about Giving Tuesday. And let's not forget to do a little something nice for someone else who maybe isn't already on your Christmas list or holiday list, just to keep it non-denominational. Either way, have a good one.